how great is that? I didn't even have to say anything. <laughs> it's such an honor and a pleasure to be here. I'm so excited to be in what I call God's country. I'm a snowboarder and I love powder. And there's no place better in the world than right here in Hokkaido. Ted. A lot of different meanings for Ted. Originally, technology, entertainment, design. I think that E has shifted more towards education. Or as Dilip would say, it's talking, eating, and drinking. <laughs> I like all three versions of it. What does TED mean to Japan? What does the TEDx movement mean, mean to Japan? And how, how has it evolved? Japan is probably the most creative, intelligent country in the world, if you look at this definition that's up here. When confronted with a challenge that is nearly but not entirely novel, Japan is amazing at taking something and making it better. I don't think anybody in the world would debate that. The world looks at Japan as being highly creative. But Japan's creative confidence is quite low. So one of the things that TED and the TEDx movement has been doing has been developing Japan's creative confidence through TED's main slogan, which is ideas worth spreading. A lot of people think about TED as talks, talking heads, people on stage. Yes, that's part of it. But really, I think more than anything, it's about connecting our two spiritual needs, learning and sharing. TED very much is about learning and sharing and bringing people together to learn and share. I remember the first time I went to TED in Monterey and there was 500 of us sitting in this room. I get chills actually every time I think about this because this was the first session, first talk. How many have seen this video, Dr. J Jill Potato Taylor? How many have seen this? Well, if you haven't, over 10 million people have viewed this video. It's one of the most popular talks online. It's absolutely phenomenal. So to be in a room at TED or even a TEDx experience live actually is quite different than just seeing the talks online. What you don't see is all the things that happen outside of the talks, the spaces that are created for people to relax, engage, or just to sit and relax and watch the talks live. Or people lying on beds watching Ted in bed. <laughs> or getting a massage. You need a head massage after five days of Ted. That's for sure. Or the parties that take place on the beach before and after. When people really are getting together and developing a sense of community. Or the little side shows that are taken on. I mean, TED is really about bringing all kinds of different people together. I mean, what does Queen Nora have to do with the co-founder, Sergey, of Google? And then guess what happened? They had a problem with the technology. And some heckler from the top came down and started heckling TED because it's technology. That heckler was Robin Williams. <laughs> what does Robin Williams, Sergey, and Queen Nora have in common? TED. It's really about bringing people together. Can you imagine having an after party in an aquarium and somebody slicing up sirloin beef and behind you is a tank of jellyfish? <laughs> now that's an idea worth spreading. Or you see the entertainment there and you see this little Japanese-American guy named Jake Shimabukuro that says, you know what I love about the ukulele? is people have low expectations of it. And then he's just jamming. But not only that, but what you don't see is you don't see the after party at midnight when he's playing and jamming with all the other artists after the TED sessions. So it's not just the talks that are online. It's really about ideas we're spreading in every possible way. But I think if you go deeper and deeper into what TED means, it's about creating those aha moments. How do you create an aha moment? Aha moments are when you have all these different things that are disconnected, like Queen Nora and Sergey and Robin Williams, and you bring them all together, 
And your mind's going nuts. It's trying to figure out and make sense of all these different things that are coming at it. And then, ah, aha, something new comes. A new idea comes and sparks. That's what I think really TED is about. It's also about dreaming. I know every single year I go to TED, I come back with a bigger dream and a bigger vision. And I'm inspired to make that dream come true because the people that are in the room and around me are not only dreamers, but they make those dreams come true. What's wrong with this picture you see here? Do you think Bill Gates is dreaming about the apple that he has in his hand? <laughs> and when you talk about dreams, Japan is my home. And I think Japan will be the, my home for the rest of my life. And one of the dreams that I had and the co-founder of TEDx Tokyo, Todd Porter, and many really important people in the Japanese community was to bring TED to Japan, to really ignite Japan through sharing ideas, through developing a community. Ted, Todd Porter had salons going on. In the beginning, you couldn't have live speakers. You could only show the videos, and then people could get together and talk about it. And then we took it to the next level, and we asked Ted if we could live stream in Ted into a small apartment in Geogalka, and they said yes. And then we said, this is great, but we actually want to have our own speakers. We believe in Japan, there's Japanese people that have ideas worth spreading around the world, and we want them to share. And Ted said, guess what? You guys are in luck, because we're creating something new, because every city in the world would love to have Ted but we can't be everywhere. And so the first TEDx event in the world took place in California. The second TEDx event took place in Japan. Quite a responsibility with no partners and very few people that had really tasted the TED sauce. But we gave it a try. And we put together an event. And a few months later, we were so ecstatic and we saw Laura Stein, the director of TEDx, standing on the stage talking about one of the premier events in the world, event that we started in Japan. It just really ignited the community and made people really want to do more. But it's not just about a conference or a day. It's really our dream was to create a platform, a platform for innovation, creativity in Japan, bring all the different groups together because Japan has this group and this group and this group, but why don't we bring them all together? and create an innovation platform and use TED. So the community was just as important as, as the success of the event. And we started developing a community. And then we started to find some of our speakers and entertainers. Next you know, they ended up on the main TED stage. The very first Japanese speaker was on the stage last year, Kenichiro Mogi. And Black, the two-time world champion, Yo-Yo world champion, will be on the stage, the main stage at TED this year. So we feel like there's ideas we're spreading and we're getting closer and closer, but it's not necessarily about sharing the ideas on the TED stage because we have our own platforms here. One of the things that's evolved over time as well has been having talks in Japanese. I checked the other day, there was 1,010 talks subtitled in Japanese. Now, initially, for a lot of Japanese people, they think, ah, it's about presentation or about learning English. But as Kondo-san shared earlier, it's also, there's a lot of really key ideas and messages that are embedded within the talks that I think are really powerful and insp inspiring as well. And I think that's probably what brings you here today. Just like Ted, we wanted to have our ideas worth spreading, and we wanted to think outside of the box. So this year, we had this really silly idea. Why don't we have our after party in a shrine? And the Japanese people that were with us were like, you can't have a party in a shrine. <laughs> I'm like, why not? You just, you just can't do that. I'm like, well, well, who's the god? If I remember correctly, there was a mirror that you look at and you're kind of the god and it's a reflection of yourself, so, but you just can't do that. You can't have a party in a shrine. So we went to the shrine and we asked them, hey, can we have a party here? And the nephew of the owner said, are you talking about Ted? You want to bring Ted to our shrine? Yay! 
And so thinking outside of the box, ideas were spreading, continuing to shift the idea of ideas were spreading in different ways. And it was 920-year-old shrine this year with live music, if you can only imagine it. Um, it was absolutely extraordinary. But another idea of ideas were spreading and moving things forward. I'm an educator. My official title is learning activist. I think we should all be learning, actively learning around the world. There's nobody I know that wants the E in TED to be education as much as it is entertainment. And a group of us got together and launched what was Youth Day. And that movement was launched in Japan. Last year, during the middle of November, uh, during United Nations uh, Children's Rights Day, over 100 events, youth events, where middle school and high school kids around the world organized their own te TEDx events. It was absolutely extraordinary. So it's been interesting to see as the TEDx movement has grown, the different kind of TEDx events there are. About two months after March 11th hit Tohoku, we had our TEDx event. Many people said, you're going to cancel, right? You can't do a TEDx event. We said, absolutely not. We're the opposite. We're more motivated than ever to do an event. This inspired a group of university students in Tohoku. At Tohoku University, said, we want to make a difference. We know we're still in college, but we want to start making a difference in Tohoku. So they started the TEDx uh, Tohoku University event, which has also been quite a movement throughout Japan of many different universities. YZ started for young adults who've not quite hit the tipping point. They're there, they're thinkers, they're doers, they're change makers, but they haven't quite, quite gotten there yet. I think most of it's due to the amount of experience and time that they have. Gatherings in the evenings of people getting together and talking about how can we connect the dots? What can we do for Japan? How can we move it forward has been taking place throughout Japan through the, te the TEDx platform. TED realized we need more people to come and taste the sauce. So they created an opportunity for TEDx organizers to go to Active and get a sense of what TED is because if you haven't experienced it, it's really hard then to create an environment that's very TED-like after. Teachers Movement also as well was launched in Japan, which is starting to become a global movement. And not long ago in Sendai, the World Bank with IMF wanted to have their own TEDx event in Japan. So many of the TEDx organizers got together and collaborated with World Bank to actually put on a TEDx event to showcase to the world, again, what Japan has to share with the rest of the world. There are TEDx events from Sapporo all the way down to Okinawa. There is over 20 TEDx organizers and licenses throughout Japan, and this number is growing rapidly. TED decided Japan was a place they wanted to go when they did the global talent search and see if they could find some people to go on the main stage at TED from Japan. TEDx organizers around the world are starting to collaborate. There's been collaboration with so many different countries in Asia, including Taipei and Shanghai. Since we launched the global movement in Japan, there's an extraordinary amount of events that have taken place. This is data from about, I think, two months ago. There is, on average, five TEDx events that are taking place around the world. The amazing part, it's 100% volunteer. All of the people working here today to provide this environment for you are volunteers. Where are we today? I'll give you a taste of a TEDx through the eyes of a camera that I was holding as I was walking around to give you a sense of um, how things have continued to evolve here in Japan.
Again, 100% volunteers. I think it's absolutely extraordinary. The social media has really picked up on the TEDx movement in Japan, like you wouldn't believe. NHK decided that it was so valuable that they wanted to have a TV show every Sunday night. They've just renewed. They will have another year of super presentation. The first time ever in Shibuya Crossing, there was an event shown live. It wasn't the whole event, but parts of it. So I think the TEDx movement has definitely arrived in Japan. There's no question about it. There has been people who've gone through their own self-discovery, have started their own businesses, have joined companies of people that have met in the TEDx community that have like minds. People getting together that may have never gotten together with the big picture in mind and hope and the wish for change. Partners have decided they want to have a little bit more of the TED sauce themselves within their organization or how they can work and collaborate with other partners and organizations throughout Japan. Some of the top entrepreneurs after 311 came to the TEDx community and asked the top people of alternative energy, what are the alternative energy resources that we can use instead of nuclear energy? The platform has been created. It's here, it's living, it's alive. People are, are having a great time and being part of it because passion, hope, and inspiration and the spirit of coming together, I don't know anything more powerful than that. People are coming to Japan that maybe wouldn't have come to Japan and to join and learn more about the ideas Japan has worth spreading. And no question in my mind, the in crea creative intelligence is there. Let's take that and combine that and have the creative confidence that Japan needs to move forward. Thank you very much.